Hello, my name is Simon Eyes and welcome to another Simon Eyes Guide video. Today we're looking at gearing your combat rogue in phase 2 of Wrath of the Lich King. We'll talk about what all the best gear is, what some alternatives are, and talk a little bit about general gearing strategy. So as usual, let's get right to it. And the first thing that's important for gearing a combat rogue is to know that there's actually two different setups you can use as a combat rogue that simulate for their damage output virtually identical, both in our spreadsheet tools and simulator tools. You can use this setup on screen here that uses zero pieces of the tier eight set, or you can use a two piece tier set with the helmet and shoulders. However, this set requires you to obtain an additional piece of loot from Algalon 25 man, the solar bindings. So I'm generally recommending to use the non tier setup that requires one less piece of loot from Algalon 25 man. So let's start with the helmet. We're looking at Mimiron's flight goggles. This comes from Mimiron hard mode 10 man. And if you're not getting the flight goggles, your next best is gonna to be to slap on that Conqueror's Terror Blade and try to aim for a two or four piece setup depending on where you're at in your gearing process. For the necklace, we have Pendulum of Infinity. This is an item level 252 item, which means it comes from a 25 man hard mode boss. It comes from General Vezax. For all of the 25 man hard mode loot, this is stuff that's gonna be really difficult to obtain. Even if your guild are killing these bosses, you only get one piece of eye level 252 loot per boss per week. So it's just gonna be pretty scarce. So it's important to know what your second best alternatives are, especially for these items. And the second best on your Pendulum of Infinity is Seed of Budding Carnage. It comes from 10 man Freya hard mode. It's a pretty substantial downgrade from the Pendulum of Infinity, but not your most significant downgrade. Then you have your shoulder pads of the intruder in the shoulder. These come from Iron Council hard mode in 25 man. They're a great shoulder piece with hit uh, expertise, a lot of attack power, two sockets, it's great. But if you can't get these, again, you're gonna look at your terror blade piece and try to set up with two or four pieces, again, depending on how much other gear you have. And this actually brings us to one of the most difficult parts of gearing a combat rogue in phase two. You see these shoulder pads of the intruder, they're really good, but they have a lot of expertise on them. As a combat rogue, our expertise cap is pretty low. And we're looking at our shoulders, our chest, our bracers, and our belt as potential slots that are gonna be giving us expertise. And here, you know, we see we're not using the very powerful solar bindings because they'd put us way over expertise cap. The combat rogue doesn't get to utilize all of the best equipment with the most stats on it because all of that equipment just happens to have too much expertise. With the chest piece, we have Embrace of the Gladiator uh, as our best option. And this is a relevant expertise piece because it's the only chest that doesn't have expertise on it. So if you don't get Embrace of the Gladiator from Thorim 25 man hard mode, you're gonna be stuck with one of these other options, Conqueror's Terror Blade, Valorous Terror Blade, Winter's Icy Embrace, Chest Guard of the Recluse. These all have a lot of expertise on them. So they will lock you out from using Shoulder Pads of the Intruder or your Soul Devouring Cinch. Now we kind of skipped over, we have the Cloak slot here. That's a Drape of Icy Intent. That comes from Hodier 25 man hard mode with your second best option being pretty close for a combat rogue with Drape of the Faceless General. On the bracers, we have fluxing energy coils. With this setup, you could put on solar bindings. Uh, you'd waste a lot of the expertise, but it'd be effectively equal in terms of your damage output. So opt for the fluxing energy coils from 10 man deconstructor hard mode and leave the Algalon loot to someone else who can really utilize it much better. For the gloves, we have the Gloves of the Endless Dark. These come from Algalon 10 man. So it's kind of difficult boss, but they're really good. They're a decent upgrade over the Conqueror's Terror Blade Gauntlets. But again, like most of these hard mode pieces, if you don't get that hard mode piece or you just don't have it yet, equip Terror Blade option in that slot and try to aim for a two or four piece setup. Combat can benefit greatly from both the two and four piece. And then we come to Soul Devouring Cinch. This one is really, really, really good. It is a lot better than your second best option, Belt of the Twilight Assassin. We move from the Soul Devouring Cinch to a less significant item, the Leg Guards of Cunning Deception. 
For combat, it is a pretty big upgrade over the second best option, which would be your Conqueror's Terror Blade leg plates. For your boots, you have foot pads of silence. These should be pretty easy to get because these are a crafted item. Now, if you can't afford them right away as the weeks go on, more people obtain more materials. These should come down in price till they're affordable. Until then, if you're not buying these right away, you're gonna be looking at your Flame Stalker boots from Ignis 25 man. This guy doesn't have a hard mode. He's always normal mode. A little bit worse, not too much worse option. For the rings, we have Band of Lights and Brand's Signet Ring as our best options. The rings are a little bit more significant for combat than they are for assassination, but they're still just not that big of a deal. If you have to give up Pryo on some items, I recommend you give up Pryo on these rings and look at your second or third or fourth best options. Your Loop of the Agile, Cinder Shard, and Brand Sealing Ring. You should probably stay away from Godbane Signet. You know, we're not looking to add any more expertise onto this gear set. We're mostly looking to find good items that don't have expertise to allow us to use our best items that do happen to have expertise like the intruder and the cinch. For the trinkets, we have Comet's Trail as far and away the best trinket. This is your best in slot this phase, and it is also your best in slot next phase when Trial of the Crusader comes out. This is something that you're gonna get a lot of use out of if you're able to get your hands on it. It is loot that comes from Alglon the Observer in Old War 25, man. So it's something that's gonna be pretty difficult to obtain. For the second best trinket for combat, you can go with either Dark Matter or the Mjolnir Runestone. These are effectively equal. Which one you pick up is just whichever one you can get your hands on first. There's not really a meaningful difference in terms of second best trinket. Dark Matter is one that comes from Algalon 10 man, which is again, Algalon even 10 man, kind of difficult, but Mjolnir Runestone, much easier. Thorim 10 man hard mode. That is a pretty accessible boss to get a very strong trinket from. For your range slot, you're effectively equal between Twirling Blades and Skyforge Crossbow. Either of these are fine. There is not a meaningful difference between these. The Skyforge Crossbow comes from Algalon 25. It also drops from Thorim 25 hard mode. The Twirling Blades comes from Old War 10 man flame leviathan hard mode. The range slot, it's just not that big of a deal. I wouldn't worry about trying to prioritize a range slot item. There's a lot of options that are really close in performance to these top two. Finally, we come to our weapons. For the main hand, our best available weapon is Golden Serenite Dragon from Old War 25 man. This is flame leviathan hard mode. The next best main hand we can grab is the Masticator that comes from 10 man Iron Council hard mode. It's quite a bit worse than the Golden Serenite Dragon. Our offhand Blade Twister as the best dagger option. And then if you can't grab a Blade Twister from Freya 25 man hard mode, these are gonna be pretty contested because assassination rogues want two of them. You want one of them. You actually have a second best option in Combatant's Boot Blade from Thorim 10 man hard mode which is really not that much worse. It's only a small downgrade from Blade Twister. So really you have quite a few weapon options to pick up. While going over these items, we talked a little bit about what you should prioritize and what you shouldn't, but I'd like to get into a little bit more detail about that. On the screen here, we have a chart comparing our best in slot items on the left, and then the best gear set you could build without that particular item and what you would replace it with. And then in the middle, we have how much worse the DPS is. So you can see if you don't have Embrace of the Gladiator, the best set you can build is 154 DPS worse in the spreadsheet than one with Embrace of the Gladiator. This puts Embrace of the Gladiator solidly as the most significant item to obtain in the face. Coming up as a close second, we have the Soul Devouring Cinch then the shoulder pads of the intruder, and finally Comet's Trail at about minus 83 DPS if you were to replace that with Dark Matter. This kind of numeric comparison should really help you in determining what you want to be prioritizing and what you can kind of pass to other people because, you know, you can't have everything. Your rings are, are really not that significant. Your ranged weapon, not that big a deal. Blade Twister going down to Combatant's Boot Blade, again, not that big a deal. The cloak, the, the 
bracers, going from fluxing energy coils to mechanist bindings, not something you really need to focus on or prioritize compared to these other much more significant items. Now, something that is often requested is a best in slot list that does not involve 25 man hard mode gear. And that's what you see on the screen right here. None of this gear comes from 25 man hard modes. This is the best set you can make outside of that. And a lot of it ends up being 10 man hard mode loot. I think a lot of the 10 man hard modes are gonna be accessible to a majority of people. Maybe not the first or second week, but you get a little bit of old war gear, you're gonna be able to start knocking down those 10 mans even in more casual guilds. With this set, we're utilizing four pieces of Conqueror's Terror Blade, getting that juicy 20% rupture damage bonus. And we're sticking on Masticator and Combatant's Boot Blade. We got Dark Matter and Runestone as our trinkets. Remember, we said these were effectively equal to each other. And if you don't have Comet's Trail, well, then you'd go for Dark Matter and the Runestone. For the rings, we have Loop of the Agile and Brand Ceiling Ring. And we still have our Soul Devouring Cinch. And if you don't have the Soul Devouring Cinch, it makes this sword setup with Seralus and Void Saber actually look quite a lot better. One of the problems with the sword setup is Seralus has extra expertise on it. So if you're already over cap, this is even more wasted stats. But say, you know, you didn't have your Soul Devouring Cinch and you only had your Death Warmed Belt, well then th this weapon setup's pretty good. Just kind of the problem with gearing towards these swords is that it doesn't cleanly upgrade into your best in slot Serenite Dragon and Blade Twister because you're swapping your weapon specialization. You know, if you have these two and then you grab a Serenite Dragon, you might not have a good dagger offhand. Whereas if you started with Masticator and Boot Blade, you can easily slot in a Golden Serenite Dragon or a Blade Twister. That covers pretty much everything I want to say about combat gearing in Phase 2. Really, the main takeaway of this video should be that gearing around your expertise cap is just going to be a headache. What items are upgrades, how much of an upgrade they are for you is going to depend on what items you already have when we're talking about expertise slots. Again, that's the shoulder, the chest, the bracer, and the belt are ones that either will or will not have expertise depending on where you are in your gearing process. So everyone's path as a combat rogue gearing up in Old War is gonna be a little bit different depending on you know what items you actually get your hands on. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope you have fun in Old War. Thanks for watching The Simonized Show. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Can't wait for more sweet videos. Links are on screen that you can watch right now. Be sure to join the Discord server and pop by on Twitch to catch me live. Links to both are in the video description. Thank you for watching and have a great day.